Hello everyone, my name is Greg Zahn. I'm an assistant professor of clinical emergency medicine at Indiana University and a member of the Division of Emergency Medicine Ultrasound. Welcome to a new monthly series that we are kicking off where we will be highlighting an interesting case every month as it relates to ultrasound utilization and helping provide world-class care for our patients. With that in mind, if you happen to have an interesting case you want highlighted for this series, feel free to email me at gzahn at iu.edu. Now on to the case. This was a case I personally managed with Dr. Paul Garvrick, one of our great second year residents. Medic presented with a 56 year old female in moderate distress. As Medic was wheeling her into the room, we could hear the patient yelling that she couldn't breathe. Upon going to bedside, the patient clearly displayed signs of the kidney with accessory muscle use. Direct history is limited from the patient given her inability to speak more than one to two word sentences. Thus, Dr. Garvrick was able to elicit a history from Medic and the patient's significant other. It was reported that the patient has started to feel more poorly over the past day and had become progressively more short of breath. The patient had apparently never experienced similar symptoms in the past. Her physical was remarkable for a non-rebreather applied by Medic, who reported that they were unable to achieve an oxygen saturation of more than 90%, even with the use of a non-rebreather. This was confirmed on our initial vitals, with the patient's saturation being 89% on 15 liters, in addition to her increased work of breathing, her lungs were found to be clear to auscultation, yet this was limited by her body habitus. She was also found to be profoundly tachycardic with a heart rate in the 130s. As we were finishing up the history, we asked about recent changes in her medical history. The significant other then stated, oh, by the way, she had an aortic valve replacement and aortic arch repair a few weeks ago. As we were considering her differential, nursing handed us this EKG. It appeared remarkable for tachycardia and nonspecific ST wave abnormalities. Additionally, we had asked for portable chest x-ray and were able to visualize the following on the portable machine screen at bedside minutes after arrival. The chest x-ray was consistent with our physical exam findings and didn't display an etiology for the patient's abnormal vital signs or symptomatic complaints. Given her recent complex history and broad differential, we decided to evaluate her with cardiac echo at bedside. On the patient's peristernal long axis view, the right ventricle appeared large and we subsequently transitioned into a peristernal short axis view. Our image quality is limited given her body habitus and her respiratory distress, which did not allow optimization of imaging. Even with the limited views, we could clearly see enlargement of the right ventricle compared to the left ventricle. Additionally, it was noted that the interventricular septum appeared to be flattened with impingement into the left ventricle commonly known as a D-shaped septum. As you can see by this diagram, the normal circle appearance of the left ventricle is replaced by flattening of the septum, given a D-shaped appearance to the left ventricle. In the right clinical context, this is concerning for elevated right-sided heart pressures. For those who are not as familiar with bedside cardiac echo, I included a normal peristernal short axis view on another patient as a comparison to our patient's imaging. The image quality is clearly much better, yet more importantly, the normal appearance of the left ventricle can be compared to the abnormal appearance displayed by our patient's imaging. After the peristernal imaging, we obtained an apical four chamber view, while ideally, we would like to see the interventricular septum coming down the center of the screen compared to this oblique appearance. Even with this limitation, the image did show dilation of the right ventricle with bowing of the septum into the left ventricle. Findings of elevated right-sided heart pressures are easily displayed by this diagram. Make sure to pay attention to the ventricular ratio, the right ventricular free wall, and the apex. For comparison's sake, I again included a normal apical four view as a reference to our patient's imaging. After the limited echo views, we felt strongly that the patient was suffering from an acute massive pulmonary embolism. To further support our thinking, we did obtain a proximal DVT study, which can be seen here. The imaging was obtained in the right inguinal region. Here we can see the common femoral vein on the right hand side with the superficial and deep femoral artery on the left. Echodynistic can be seen within the right femoral vein, and the vein is subsequently shown to be non-compressible. Here is a final review of anatomy that you are seeing in the relationship of the artery versus the vein. 
Once again, I provided a comparison of a normal DVT study compared to our patient's imaging. The constellation of the patient's imaging and clinical picture fully supported a pulmonary embolism. By using ultrasound, we had a strong presumptive diagnosis within minutes of arrival that would have been nearly impossible otherwise. Heparin was immediately started and our massive PE protocol was activated even without a definitive diagnosis. There were concerns about the patient tolerating a CT in a multidisciplinary discussion with pulmonary critical care, CV surgery, and interventional radiology ensued. Given her recent valve and aortic surgeries, everyone decided to hold on TPA. Before a definitive diagnosis could be obtained, the patient coded. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation was initiated and pulses were regained. At this time, we decided to give TPA. After prolonged hospitalization, the patient was discharged to rehab facility with only unilateral weakness. Hopefully everyone has appreciated this case in a review of focused cardiac ultrasound. Skill with point of care bedside echo is easily attainable and can greatly impact management decisions we encounter. Don't be afraid to utilize ultrasound next shift. Thanks for your time and have a good day.